Welcome to Stuff You Should Know from HowStuffWorks.com. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark with Charles W. Smiley Face Bryant and Jerry Party Face Roland. I got no emoji. I'm just Josh. Wink Face. Sure. Eggplant and peach. Whoa. I know. That's dirty. <laughs> But you can say eggplant and peach and get away with it, even on the TV. Sounds like a delightful meal. It does. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't at all. But no, not at all. It is cute, for sure. Uh, I use the bitmoji now some. Some. Which I see is not even in this research, so I just thought I'd throw it out there early. Mm-hmm. I want to go on record as saying that my bitmoji is one of the best because I'm honest. Do you oh. even do Bitmoji? Do you even have that? Sure, I've got one. Okay, because, you know, you design your own thing. Mm-hmm. So I found that a lot of people's Bitmojis aren't very honest. Oh, I you know see what, what you mean, the, uh, the, the image of the person. I see. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've got a little chubby bearded guy. <laughs> and every time I send it to someone, they're like, oh, my God, that looks just like you. Yeah. And I say, yeah, because I'm honest. Right. I didn't make myself a supermodel. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I thought you meant you were just like, like you'd say, like, I don't like that. And mean it kind of thing. No, I don't know if I've ever sent you a bitmoji, so I'm going to do that right now. I don't think you have, Chuck. In real time. Me. Okay. What do you want? Uh, you want me on an elephant? Yes. Or me crying in the rain because you're not near me. Can you cry in the rain on an elephant? Uh, I don't think I can combine those. <laughs> Either one's fine. <laughs> elephant. We'll do elephant. I love elephants. Well, I can't find the elephant now. So I'll just blow you a kiss. Okay. So what we're talking about today are not bitmojis, although they would qualify as a sub type of this, I guess, but they use a lot of words. It's kind of like when you're playing charades and somebody's like, that's close, that's close. It's Mm -hmm. like you can't talk, man. You have to just shut up. You have to charade it. That's the difference between bitmoji and emoji, and emoji is really what we're talking about today, which is a pictograph, basically, like um, a hieroglyph. Okay, but it's a yeah. modern hieroglyphic. Yeah, and I will also go on record as saying I don't really use emojis anymore because of the bitmoji. <laughs> um, and I don't use them that often, but it's always funny to send a bitmoji to someone, like kind of go out on a limb and be like, should I send this? Oh, and then yeah. you get one back. Like I remember the first time I bitmojied Hodgman. Uh-huh. I thought, he's going to think I'm just so stupid. And he sent one right back. He's I, on the I, Bitmoji train. I can buy that for sure. Yeah. But, I can um, totally see that. I don't use the emojis much anymore, but I did when they, when I, I guess they first kind of hit the, the scene on the smartphone. Right. Um, and now I get a little, I mean, Uh-oh. kissy faces and stuff are fine, but I don't like when I just get like a thumbs up reply for, okay, that's fine. Or Thumbs up is almost like a, I can barely tolerate you. Yeah, that's what it feels like to me. That's what they're saying. I can't be bothered to type OK. Right. I say KK because it really kind of takes OK and and turns it even more personal. Oh, I always thought you were just jittery. No. I meant to type K and just had a... No, I'm saying KK. Because I know you have legendarily fast thumbs. I do. It's from all the <laughs> coffee I drink and the speed. Uh, I will also say this, that this article, and uh, I mean, I kind of picked it because, well, I'm going to be honest. We needed something a little easier this week because it's a tough week. This is a little more in-depth than you may have thought. More in-depth and, like, way more interesting than I thought. Sure. The whole history of it I thought was pretty fascinating. So let's talk about the history of it, man. Um, The the widely agreed-upon start date for emojis comes back in 1982, all the way back in 1982. And... It wasn't an emoji that first came out. It was what are known as emoticons, the predecessor of emoji. Boy, remember those days when we were all just big dummies and typed colon parentheses? Pa- parentheses. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, wait, it wouldn't be that. That'd be, that's not even a thing. Yeah, colon parentheses is smiley face. Oh, pre- I was thinking quotation, sorry. Yeah. Right. So colon and a parentheses, either way, is a smiley face or a frowny face. Mm-hmm. And that, we can point to, this is so cool that that they know who did this, but a guy named um, uh, Scott Fallman, and he was either an admin or a frequent user or whatever, had something to do with the message board, the electronic message board 
um, which was a very, very early like chat room forum prototype mm-hmm. back in 1982 for uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Yeah. Which we did some time there. Yeah, we, we served out a sentence there. We did. Now we did a little uh, little short video at Carnegie Mellon. For days. Yeah, short video great. for days. Yeah. But yeah, in 1982, he, uh, and I don't even know if you said specifically, but September 19th, they actually had the actual date. Right. Which is amazing. Uh, and he said, on this bulletin board, if you put a smiley face using this, uh, actually he even gussied it up with the dash as the nose. The, they lost the dash pretty quick. I like the dash. Do you? I sort think of. it's overdone. Do you know what I like? Or it's the, like it's a horse face. <laughs> what I like are the people that are can do like a whole picture uh, out of typing things. Oh yeah, like the shrug guy. Yeah, that's oh, hard. No, to no, do. no. I mean, like this whole page would be oh. a, a big rooster. It's like the kids in me, you, and everyone we know. Yeah, exactly. They remember <laughs> they had like the book of those. Uh-huh. That was the cutest touch. Yeah, good movie. That is the one movie. That has ever done whimsy right and didn't go over the edge. It was whimsical to an exactly perfect, non-annoying degree. So every other movie with whimsy you hate? Yes. Okay. Like hate. I do like Shrug Guy, though. Shrug Guy, I've never learned to just copy and paste him. Well, I've never done it myself, but I just like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's creative because it looks exactly like what it is. Yeah. Um, And I was always partial to, uh, as well, to the... uh, uh, awkward, which was which was that colon slash? Oh, that one. It's kind of like mm, I, I don't have know. mixed feelings about because it can also mean like, wow, I'm really disappointed, or it's like sure, it means that's why I like it. I think very versatile. It, it is versatile. There's a lot to it. All right. So anyway, he said if you use a smiley face with a colon and that uh, dash in parentheses mm-hmm. in your comment to say it's humorous, then I think we can avoid. It, it was kind of used to clear up like the ambiguity of th- text and things like that. Not texting, but, you know, sometimes it's hard to read. Like, wait, is this person making a joke? Right, right. So if somebody was joking or being sarcastic. Yeah, like use this thing. You Right. And then the person will know and we won't have an argument on the message board because the person will know you were joking, right? Yeah, and it started in 1982. And what, as we'll see, what Fallman hit on the head was the very point that emojis fulfill, which is they add context to mm-hmm. plain text. Which is important. Yeah. So um, Fallman came up with this triumphant victory, like you said, September 19th, 1982. And now he's sitting on a mountain of cash. And Oh, yeah, man. He <laughs> trademarked it very wisely. So hopefully everybody's sending him the money yeah, every yeah. time they use that emoticon. But before him... Mm-hmm. And I thought this was super interesting. Mm-hmm. People have always, of course, put little smiley faces in letters and things like that. So this was an extension of that. But um, some historians say in 1648, Robert Herrick wrote a poem entitled To Fortune. And it seems as if he has purposefully included an emoticon in a line, upon my ruins, smiling yet. And he puts a colon and a parenthesis. After the word smiling, and people say that may have actually been the very first use of this. Right. I, I read the little article that, that had that, and there was a um, there was a, a note, an addendum, an appendage, if you will. It said this is BS? Basically. <laughs> oh, really? It said in a, in, it was from an English professor who said that at this time in, what, 1648, in the mid-17th century, there was no no standardized punctuation, and so even a poet writing something, sending it off to the printer, would not necessarily expect the printer to follow oh. his punctuation to a T. Oh. I think it's a bit of a lame explanation. Why even go to the trouble? Yeah. Maybe, maybe this professor was saying the printer himself could have added this and that it wasn't the poet's intent hmm. and that it was just accidental. I'm not sure. I like to think that, yeah, this guy had a, a tremendous amount of foresight. That's what I'm going to believe. And, and in 1648, this Robert Herrick said, here's your first emoticon, everybody. Come back and find me in 2012. Yeah, I'm going to go with that story. Okay. That's what we're going with. So we had the emoticon either beginning in 1648 or definitely beginning in 1982. <laughs> yeah. And that's all we had to deal with for a good 13 years if it was the latter. Um, and then in 1995, 
we finally get our first emojis. And we know where those came from, too. And believe it or not, everybody, they came from Japan. I know. No surprise, right? Right. Uh, it was a company called NTT uh, D little O, big C little O, M little O. Docomo. We're going to call it Docomo because that's what it spells. Sure. And they had two icons, a phone and a heart. And this is when, in 1995, people um, had pagers. Yeah, beepers. Did you ever have a pager? Oh, yeah, I have tons. <laughs> Did you really? Uh-huh. <laughs> you had like two or three at a time? Sure. Depending on, you know, what you needed? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't think I – maybe I did. I think when I got into the film business, I had to get a pager. But it was very, very soon after mm-hmm. that my first, like, Nokia phone right. came into play. Yeah. I didn't have a pager for years and years. I think I had a pager for, like, a year. Gotcha. If I remember correctly. Yeah. I mean, they were – for those of you – for you kids out there, there's probably plenty of kids who listen to us that have no idea what a pager is. All right. Let's tell them. It's like a little – a little – I guess digital thing that was like the size of a, there you go. It was like the size of um, a cigarette pack, but you guys all vape, you don't smoke cigarettes. It was smaller than that. Okay, it was the size of, um, I don't even know what size it was. It was the size of a very tiny cell phone. I guess we could say inches. It was about like two inches by an inch and a half. Which is some unknown amount of centimeters. (laughs) Right, yeah. But it was a very small little box, and you carried it with you. And a little clip that you could put on your belt. It was a magic little box because somebody would call a number that Mm -hmm. was associated with your pager, Mm -hmm. and they would like type in their phone number Mm -hmm. after the beep and hang up or press pound, I think, afterward. Then you hang up, and then you got a little alert on that little thing you wore on your belt, and it it would be like beep 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 beep. It was very annoying. Mm -hmm. And the the person's number would be next to it. And if they really needed to talk to you, they'd put 911 after Yeah, so you would then pull your car over, find a payphone, Uh call the number on your pager, and say, "Uh, you got the stuff? (laughs) (laughs) You'd be like, what's up? What's so important, right? Yeah. That was how people communicate with one another before cell phones. It's really, it seems like a hundred years ago, and it's really funny that it was the mid-90s. Right, and then people said, well, why don't we just make phones more portable? And they're like, oh, that's actually, I hadn't thought about that. Good idea. Yeah, because, I mean, they had had bag phones and car phones at the time. Right. It was a thing. So the, um, the Japanese... The entire country of Japan had pagers in the early 90s. Yeah, they were early adopters. Yeah, for sure. And um, this Docomo, uh, they had a, a line called uh, Pocket Bell Pagers, and they were the ones that first added emojis. There was a heart and a phone. Yeah, the phone meant call me, the heart, very sweetly. I love that the heart was one of the first ones, mm-hmm. basically sending a message of love. Uh, and then later on in the 90s, uh, late 90s, I guess, they streamlined, uh, streamlined that got rid of those icons because apparently uh, Pocket Bell pagers, there were a lot of business people that used them, and they weren't into it. So the teenagers were like, forget you then, Docomo. Right. We're out of here. We're going to Tokyo Messaging Mm -hmm. because they've got these little what would eventually be called emojis. I love that that, um, the uh, Docomo, like they got all business-like. They were like, we can't have the heart on there. Yeah. Um, That reminds me of probably my favorite onion headline of all time mm-hmm. man accidentally ends business call with i love you <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the greatest one ever that's a good one my favorite was always uh drugs win war on drugs oh yeah yeah did you see the video they made with uh i think lil wayne where they they were saying the dea had tapped lil wayne to go like carry out the war on drugs by doing all the drugs <laughs> <laughs> well, and just a picture of his sure. face, yeah. Right, yeah, but they would they use like clips of him like on a t- on his tour bus trying to talk, but he's just so wasted, he's not even making sense. And yeah, but they clip they they interspersed it in like it was a news report, and he was doing a great job. <laughs> it was good stuff. It's funny too. After our ten years of doing this, we've gotten to do so many cool things because of the show. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite things ever still is that uh, when we knew people at the Onion, they took my picture one day. Yeah. And they'll still trot that out as area man, and I will be my mug will be in an onion article every now and, and then. It's pretty cool as area man. Yeah, shout out Joe Randazzo for That's getting right. us in there. Yeah, back in the day, getting us in the office. All right, so should we take a break? Oh God, we haven't yet, have we? No, let's take a break, and we'll be back uh, to talk about where they went with Docomo right after this.
All right, man. So Docomo said, we're done with you kids. And then they said, oh, wait, God, come back. You're like a third of our business. <laughs> yeah. We had no idea. Um, luckily, they had an engineer named uh, Shigetaka Kurita. You're getting really good at the Japanese. Thank you very much. Very nice. I'm around it a lot. Yeah. And uh, I guess Kurita-san? Okay. We'll go with that. He was working on a mobile internet platform called iMode. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what? We're just trying to get some pretty basic thoughts across here. Uh, like on a er, on like a mobile network, so like your phone, mm -hmm. stuff like the news or the weather or something like that. Yeah, Rather like headlines, than, literally head, news headlines mm -hmm. and what the stock market's doing or if it's sunny outside. Right, right, and stuff that's going to like repeat on like pretty predictably over like fairly short time scales. So yeah. it's going to be sunny this day and it's probably going to be sunny again. So you're going to go back to the sunny thing over and over again. Rather than, you know, typing out sunny, what if you just had an icon of a sun? Right. And this is a huge breakthrough. And what this guy did was create the very first emojis for this iMode platform. And he actually coined the term emoji too. Shigetaka Kurita. That's right. Uh, and there was a character limit, a 250 character limit, which is Kind of the main reason behind why we have emojis is good. So, like you said, he didn't have to type out Sonny. Mm -hmm. He could use one character. Mm -hmm. uh, and in 1999, it sounded like the future back then. Yeah. Remember? Uh -huh. It's crazy. Um, he developed 176 of these initial emoticons for things dealing with the weather, sports, food and drink, love, of course. And uh, like you said, he, he made up the word E, uh, which was picture, and Moji, which was character. Uh -huh. And that's where it comes from. Yep. So the, the thing was then, you had, how many did he come up with? 200 and... 176 initial ones. Okay. Um, so the thing is, is this, this whole mobile platform, iMode, I think yeah, this is 1999 we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, they, they had a, like 250 characters tops. Yeah. But these broadband networks weren't invented yet. This was all like really lo-fi stuff still. Sure. So it was very much ahead of his time. So he kind of had to reverse engineer how to get these things across. They had a stroke of genius. Since there was a finite number of these things, rather than sending a picture from one phone to another, mm -hmm. when one user wanted to send that emoji, they stored the pictures in the phone. Yeah. And then you could activate those emojis from a simple two- Two alpha, two, I guess, two byte alphanumeric yeah. code. So when your phone got the right alphanumeric code, it would produce a smiley face. Yeah, it really set the stage for what we have today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yumi was over there at this time. She was in Japan teaching and she told me, like, you know, she, I came back and I was like, wait, we're not, we don't have texts. Like everybody texts. You don't have Hello Kitty? Right, exactly. <laughs> and it was like years before, like Japan was definitely a, doing this fairly early compared to us here. Yeah, I remember seeing um, mm -hmm. the first handheld cell phone that wasn't uh, the big brick phone. Mm -hmm. I saw one of those in L.A. Uh -huh. in the in the late 80s or early 90s. Like on a literally on a Hollywood back lot, some mm -hmm. producer had a brick phone. Right. It's like, oh my God. But the first like kind of cell phone, cell phone I ever saw was in London. And I guess it would have had to have been ninety five or ninety six. Mm -hmm. And I had never seen one. Was it like the those big rectangle with the flip down mouthpiece and the pull up antenna? Something like that. It may not have had the flip down, but it was, you know, it was smaller than a brick phone. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I just remember thinking, wow, like London, they're on the, the leading edge of technology here. Sure. Like, I, I've never seen that before. Yeah. What in the world is that guy doing? Yeah. You want, <laughs> hey, man, let me see that thing. Uh, all right. So <laughs> many years passed. Uh, more, they call them, I don't even know how much they call them emojis or icons back then probably. Well, no, if, the guy had coined the term emoji. Yeah, but I just don't know if it was like the popular term at the time. I see. I think it you was in Japan. Okay. Yeah. Again, ahead of the ahead of the thing, ahead of the curve. Yeah, I just want to make sure that that's get, been gotten across. Very much ahead of the All curve. Right, yeah. All right. In 2010, uh, a company called Unicode Consortium. Well, it wasn't a company; it was the Unicode Consortium. Yeah. They're a nonprofit, and they're a group of tech companies mm -hmm. and volunteers uh, from the tech industry that basically really understood this stuff, saw the writing on the wall, 
with the emoji on the wall mm-hmm. and where it was going. And they says, why don't we do this? We need to create a library. It needs to be standardized because I, I even remember early on with smartphones, yeah. you know, of different platforms, someone would send you an, emo- an emoji from an Android right. to an iPhone and it wouldn't come across. So they said, we need to standardize this so it can operate a- across all iOS devices. Yeah, or even if, like, the phones had the same emojis, they might not use the same codes. Right. So you might get, like, the opposite of what you're looking for. Like you're looking you're, for a peach and you get an egg, eggplant. Right, exactly. <laughs> and they're like, wow, what are you trying to say, man? So there was there was this great need for uniformity, but it didn't come out until, what, what year was it, 2010, you yeah. said? So this uh, Unicode Consortium... And the Daily Mail, by the way, called it the Unicorn Consortium, if you noticed. And I called it the Unicode Consortium. Either way. Can you pronounce it both ways? I think the Brits do that. And that's where you saw your first cell phone, so... Full circle. Yeah. So um, Unicode got together and they said, we're going to make this this, like, collective open source nonprofit effort to encode these things and create a universal standard. And in doing so, they've made what some people point to, as we'll see, as one of the first universal languages. Yeah, and also... But it's not really. Um, strangely, mm-hmm. it, it's, it, it shocked me to know that no one owns this. I love that. There is no patent or IP property rights mm-hmm. to emojis. I love that. It's great, but it's, it's kind of shocking that something so ubiquitous, some, like no one's making money off of it. I love that. No, it's wonderful. Yes. And ra- and so rare. That's why it's shocking to me. It is. Now, um, we should say that it, it, some people point to the Unicode Consortium being uh, dominated by some major, major companies. I think Google and Apple really have a lot of people in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but again, it's a nonprofit group, and there are rules that are followed. I think the implication is, is that there, if Google or Apple – puts up some suggestions, which they do sometimes, Mm -hmm. they may have a little more likelihood of getting passed than other people's emojis, maybe? Probably. Uh, And then also, since they're both American companies, the universal set of emojis tend to skew a little more American, like hot dogs and hamburgers and french fries are there, and now they're just now starting to get to, like, euros and things like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Those are not two huge downfalls in return for this thing being open source and unowned by anybody except for the entire world. Right. But one huge downfall because it's open source and anyone can do anything with these emojis is that we got the emoji movie because (laughs) some Hollywood executive was like, we don't have to pay for this. We can just go out and make a movie. Right. We'll be the first one with an emoji movie. And since we don't have to pay for it, we can put all of that <laughs> money into making something really great. Exactly. And they did. I, I I didn't see it, obviously. I didn't either. But I remember when it was announced there would be an emoji movie. I just remember thinking, oh, come on. Well, it really, really? delivered on, on that reaction from what I understand. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it was a bomb in all respects. But they still made like four times what they put into it. I think the box office oh, was like sure. two hundred million, and they they spent like fifty million on it. I don't know, but I will say this: <laughs> I have no idea what it's about at all. It's about emojis. But I know. But my prediction, having not seen it or read anything about it, uh-huh. is that it was some dumb story about the different emotions uh, coming together in the end to solve some problem. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure Hugh Jackman was in it, and <laughs> Jared from Subway was beaten up by a the bunch of people. Natos. Yeah, and then there was a Sharknado. Although, um, the one of the guys who used to be on Silicon Valley, T.J. Mitchell? T.J. Miller. Miller. He was in it. And so I was looking up the Emoji movie, and he apparently is accused of making a bomb I threat. I know, man. I just saw that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, he... I don't, I don't know how he's doing. That article made me worry for him. Yeah. He, I think he got in some argument on a train with a lady. And then, and then was said, taken off the train and called in a bomb threat on that train. That she had a bomb. Right. And uh, you, can't, you can't do that, TJ. Uh, allegedly. 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 Yeah. You can't do that, TJ Miller. No, you really can't, man. But yeah, I, I, I lay him all him this at show. the feet of the Emoji movie because yeah. he was the star of it. Absolutely. What was he? Uh, was he the eggplant or the peach? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, if he was the star then he probably would have been crying with laughter. 
because in 2017, nice segue. I believe for three straight years, uh, 15, 16, and 17, uh-huh. crying with laughter was the most popular emoji. Which I have issue with that. And in 2015, it was actually, this is what I have a problem with, Oxford Dictionary chose it as the word of the year. I don't have a problem with that part. Really? Yeah, that shows Oxford Dictionary is keeping up with with the ever-evolving language. They're descriptivist, not prescriptivist. Uh, all right. That makes them A-OK <laughs> in my book. So what's your problem? My problem is that that means that crying with laughter is overused. None of the people, maybe one hundredth of one percent of the people who sent the crying with laughter emoji were, literally were crying. actually <laughs> crying with laughter. So it's overused. Like laugh out loud. How many people are like, LOL. Like yeah. that's not that's not what that means, everybody. You ruined it. You ruined laughing out loud, and you're ruining the crying with laughter. So you're emoji. saying literally, if you're crying with laughter, is the only time you can send that. Not just saying, "Hey, that's really funny." Yes. All right. I think it would it would be <laughs> a much better world if that were the case. Okay. I I just think it's overused, and I think that's part of the. I think that's one reason why everybody's so cynical and sarcastic is because we're so out of touch with our emotions that we have the simulacrum to stand in for us that uh-huh. ex- instead of actually experiencing them. And everything has to be so much bigger and bolder right, than sure. it actually is. There's no subtlety or nuance, which is ironic because there's tons of subtlety and nuance in actually communicating with emoji. Right. I mean, there's like a medium laughter emoticon probably, right? I'm sure, probably. Or emoji? But it's the same thing as using exclamation points. Mm. You get trapped in it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, all of a sudden, if you take away the exclamation points, people are like, are you mad at me? What's wrong? It, 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 I've definitely gotten uh, in text exchanges, mm. like, hey, do you want to go do this thing or whatever? Mm-hmm. And if someone sends back, sure. You do that. Or, yeah. You do that a lot. If you just send back, sure, uh-huh. it's like... Well, I guess Chuck's not very happy about this. <laughs> I, I guess I'll start uh, adding exclamation points. No, but you shouldn't have to is my point. You should not have to. And I think we just need to rip the Band-Aid off. I don't ever want to see an exclamation point All from right. you again that you don't mean. Much less a double. The the one that really is unsettling, though, is when, when somebody replies with sure, period, mm-hmm. and the S is lowercase. That, oh. means, that means things are not going well right then. Sure. Yeah, I don't, you don't want me to be a phony. Because when I say sure, I mean, sure. But right. th- that's how I s- say it in my head. Yeah. But uh, I guess lowercase sure period is definitely. That's saying something. <laughs> Adding the period onto a lowercase word, you're sending a message. But if you're not, if you're just saying sure, like normally, mm-hmm. th- that's the problem with with text-based um, communication. Mm-hmm. It, it lacks context. It lacks emotion, which Email is how too. we're used to communicating. Yeah. Right. Any kind of text space. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, just, just letters. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? That you have to add some sort of punctuation. Uh-huh. That's the role that emojis fulfill. And we'll talk about that after a break. How about that? Sure. Lowercase period. <laughs> All right, so we'll go over some interesting stats here. 92% of people Mm -hmm. use emojis uh, online. What? That's that's almost everybody. Wow. Surprising? Yeah. And the other 8%, I don't know. The other 8% have their arms folded, and they're like, I'm not going to do it. Darn it. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We've been dancing around this peach and eggplant thing long enough. Oh, are we getting there now? Well, we might as well. So uh, these have famously become uh, stand-ins for body parts. Right, like the peach in like the Allman Brothers sense of the word. Is that what they meant? Yeah. I never really thought about that. Oh, yeah. Eat a peach, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, it, it soon became a thing to send a peach with an eggplant. I am so old and out of that loop. Mm-hmm. That I didn't know this was a real thing. I didn't either in, until um, this article. And I was like, oh, yeah, obviously. That well, makes yeah. Sense. Especially after reading about it, I'm like, then you look at the eggplant, you're like, yeah, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, another uh, famous emoji is the poop icon. Sure. It's one of the most ubiquitous 
uh, very popular in Japan and <laughs> has become it's huge in Japan. Popular in America with its fun little googly eyes. And I think uh, didn't Google even have flies buzzing around the poop? The first poop, which was a little much, frankly, but yeah, I think back in like 2008 or something like that, Google came out with their their own poop icon for Gmail, 2007, and they put flies around it, and it was just gross. Um, but they it, it's since somebody added the googly eyes later on, and now it's like a mascot. Like yeah, the poop the poop emoji without the eyes is like gross like what's wrong with you why would you send that it's like sure period right <laughs> right but the poop with googly eyes is like sure exclamation point right okay i think you're right i'm following along uh and there's been a lot of kind of um i, I would call them faux controversies over the years mm-hmm. uh like it last just last year google in 2017 had a cheeseburger icon that had the cheese under the meat patty and people went berserk that's really stupid that people went berserk but it's also stupid to put the cheese under the meat. Yeah. It's just a weird choice. Who did that? Is some the person who make that never see a cheeseburger before? It's a really ducking stupid thing to do. <laughs> but <laughs> if it was somebody who really had never seen a cheeseburger before, then God bless them and I feel bad for them for the outrage they created because even if even if they put the bun on upside down. Uh-huh. Even if they'd left off the ketchup. Okay. It doesn't matter. It still looks like a cheeseburger. I know. Settle down. I, sometimes I wonder if they do that, some of that stuff that these programmers or designers or coders or whoever does these, mm-hmm. they do that on purpose just to rib people. Like, I'm going to put the cheese. Watch the, this. Yeah. We're going to set the internet on fire. <laughs> and they did. Apparently, the CEO of Google, um, I did not know that this was the CEO of Google, Sundar Pichai. Okay. He said, we are going to drop everything else we are doing. To go sort this out. Yeah. I imagine fairly sarcastically. I would think so. Sarcastic emoticon. Right. Whatever that is. That is like, uh, I don't know what that would be. I think you got to use, I don't know what you would, what is a sarcastic emoticon. I bet there's one people use and we're just not hip to that would be my guess. Another word is old. Uh, There was a survey from Match.com that claimed that people who used emojis had sex more often than those people who didn't. Uh, apparently, the wine emoji is huge in Britain, and Australians love their drug-related emojis. We're going to be in Australia. That's right. So we're going to find out what that's all about when we're down under. Uh, and, of course, we need to talk about the skin tone. Uh, very early on, it was, um, I think in 2015, uh, the Unicode Consortium changed the default skin tone to what they call Simpsons Yellow. Mm-hmm. Uh, But then you had the ability to tint them to different, uh, I think, five different skin tones to represent, um, you know, at least five different shades of skin. Right. Which was a good start. Right. It was a good start. And I mean, they are still just getting going. There's plenty that have been left off. Um, Like they just now are starting to add redheads to things and curly haired people. That's crazy. Which is crazy um, cool that they're adding it. But, yeah, uh, there's there's always somebody whose feelings are hurt because they're left out by the emoji people every year. They also say uh, that too many smiley faces, uh, if you're dealing with work, and if you're dealing with work, maybe avoid emojis would be my guess. It depends on who you're talking with. I mean, if it's a friend or whatever. Yeah, it depends on your job, too. Yeah, if you're in banking and you're communicating with the client you've just met. It depends on what job it is, too, of course. Sure. But there is apparently a study out there that said, um, contrary to what you think, using s- too many smiley emoticons uh, don't increase your perception of warmth. They decrease perception of competence. I totally get that. But like sure. this study it was from um, oh, the journal Social, Psychological, and Personality Science. It was a 2017 study, and they said um, – not only is a, a smiley face emoji not a smile, it has some of the opposite effects. Yeah. Which is like, I mean, it, it totally makes sense if you think about it. Like, somebody's smiling, you're like, oh, I want to be around that person. Mm-hmm. Somebody's sending you a bunch of smiley faces, you're like, oh, what an idiot. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. It's really easy to cross that line. Well, yeah, and it's also really easy to get in trouble. Um, do Do not send... Emoji threats, because that's a real thing. There have been people 
all over the world that mm-hmm. have been arrested mm-hmm. for sending like handgun emojis to people that they were angry at and getting arrested. Yeah, for making like actual threats. Threats, right? That that counts legally. Which so that raises um, some questions about what emojis are. Are they language? Are they art? There's actually I want to give. Um, there's this guy. I think he's a rapper actually named Young Jake. Y U N G Jake. Mm-hmm. So the the absence of the O in Young indicates he might be a rapper. Young. <laughs> right. Young Jake. <laughs> Young Carl. Um, but Young Jake uh, is an emoji portraitist. Oh, man, that stuff was so cool. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So this guy does portraits of people, like really good portraits, mm-hmm. strictly from emojis, layered yeah. in really interesting ways. And he's got like a really great Instagram to check out, too. Y-U-N-G Jake. But go check that one out. And then there's also a dude named Fred Benenson. And he translated um, um, Moby Dick into what? emojis. Wow. It's called Emoji Dick, and every word of every line of Moby Dick has been translated into emojis. And this guy did this right. He hired three people uh-huh. to translate every single line, and then he, ha- he hired another group of people who would look at each line and then look at the line of text and say, this is the one of the three that's the that best gets this across wow. for every line. So you can get uh, emoji dick online for two hundred bucks for hard copy. Two hundred dollars. But I think he sells it by the PDF for five bucks. And is Moby Dick uh, represented by an eggplant and a peach? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> or at least the eggplant. So there's a lot of like it's obvious that emoji is art, mm-hmm. but. There's a lot of people out there, linguists included, who are saying emoji is words, too, and it may be a language that's developing in front of our eyes. It's pretty interesting. As it stands now, though, technically, if you're a linguist, it is not a language right. because it lacks grammar, which is structures that allow you to take words and put them into different combinations to create higher thoughts. Emojis do not yet allow us to do that because there's right. not real rules. Yeah, but there, I mean, there are people studying it. This one article you sent, uh, a woman named Rachel Tatman, uh, a linguistics PhD candidate from University of Washington. Go Huskies. Sure. Uh, she did some studies, like, where she would show people pictures, uh, like photographs, yeah. and then say, how would you emoji that uh, description of that picture? Right, right. And there were different pictures that were subtly different. Right. I mean, they were obviously different. Like the first one was a man counting money. Mm -hmm. And she would say, would you would you say what this picture is doing by emoji man, emoji dollar bill or emoji dollar bill, emoji man? And the results, I mean, it seemed like she didn't get a lot that were 50 50 for any of these. It seemed like most of them that she got were like 75 to 80 percent of people Mm kind of siding one way or the other as far as. Fart. <laughs> yes, what she said. As far as uh, order goes, so she believes kind of firmly that she's proven that they're bidirectional. Well, it depends. It depends. So with the one of the man counting money, eighty percent of the people said that they would they would depict that emoji wise with man and then dollar bill. And the reason why she said it was because there was an agent patient relationship. Right. The agent was the man acting on the money. Uh-huh. The patient. And it was very clear. So there's really only one way to say it. Man, money. Right. Man is counting money very much like a subject and a predicate in a sentence. That's one way they could act. They can also be um, – they can also kind of describe the layout of a photo too if there's not a very strong agent-patient relationship. Right. So her takeaway basically mm-hmm. is that they can represent like the physical arrangement of things. Mm-hmm. And also words. So there's a there, another one was a picture of a man walking past a castle, and the the castle's basically the the big part of the picture, and mm-hmm. the man's pretty small, but the man is in the lower right corner. Mm-hmm. So most people said that they would do castle man because the man's not acting on right. the castle, the castle's not acting on the man. But that's but, the way they see it. Yeah, and that's the way it's arranged in the picture. That's what I would do. So she was saying that it can it can it can mimic the structure of sentences, and it can also mimic the structure of pictures, which makes emoji definitely their own thing. Yeah. But the whole reason, the whole point of emoji, the reason that we use them, there's a guy named uh, Viv Evans. 
I think he's out of Banger University. He's a huge proponent of emojis as a new way to communicate rather than a step backwards. Because, you know, there's a lot of people, probably people who hate vocal fry, are like, emoji is so stupid. Anybody who uses emoji is <laughs> stupid. And it's a giant step backwards for language. Yeah. Which is what why I think the Oxford English Dictionary was making such a statement mm -hmm. by choosing the crying face as the word of the year. Right. They were, they were casting their lot on the side of emojis as being a new form of communication. Yeah. Um, so Viv Evans is like, yes, that's absolutely true. And they, what they do is they stand in for things like gestures and intonation, things that are missing in a strictly text-based message right. like texting or Twitter or an email. Mm -hmm. And that's what emojis do. They add emotion. They convey nuance to it that otherwise isn't there. And they're fun. Sure. <laughs> like get the stick from your uh, peach. <laughs> get the stick out of your peach and have a little fun with emojis. You know, what's funny, Chuck, is um, the apparently the mystery has never been solved as to exactly why eggplant is in there in the first place. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of a weird one to add, <laughs> considering we didn't have redheads until recently yeah. or curly-haired people, but there's always been an eggplant. Right. <laughs> it makes you wonder. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and this is the last thing I've got was uh, something you sent, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is uh, kind of a cool move. Apple wants to be more inclusive with their emojis. So they are proposing as a starting point and not a comprehensive list. They sure. are proposing including emojis uh, to represent people with disabilities. So things like uh, a man or a woman with a cane, um, prosthetic legs and arms, mm -hmm. uh, guide dogs, uh, hearing aids, people in wheelchairs, stuff like that. Right. And those would be part of Emoji 12.0, which would come out in March of 2019. And they just released Emoji 11.0 to the public, um, which includes the partying face, uh, cupcakes. Is that what this huge list is? Yeah. So these are all available now. They're going to be available on phones in August. Okay. But they were the, what the list was released to the public. And this, this Unicode consortium, they take all these under advisement, but they also put them out into the public to say, what do you guys think about these two? Right. Right. Um, and there's a few that they will never take. They never will will accept one of a living person, a deity, or a business logo. All of those are off the table immediately. But then other ones they want to make sure aren't too specific. And that so like the Golden universal. Arches, you'll never see something like that. No, no not as long as it's open source. Interesting. But there are some pretty good ones coming down the pike this August. I wonder what supervillain is. It's um, A guy twisting his mustache? It's kind of like a... Dr. Strange or Professor Strange or whatever. Dr. Strange. Kind of like pop collar uh -huh. cape. Okay. It, so you've it, seen these? It, yeah. It obviously gets across, especially when it's next to the superhero one, that it's the supervillain. I think my favorites coming soon are Nazar Amulet. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't either. Uh, Mosquito. That seems relevant. There's, there's one that's coming that's... It's probably the best emoji of all time, the clown face. Oh, that's not a thing yet? It's really well done. Yeah, because that's so versatile. It is, but it's also like a good-looking emoji. Yeah. Um, is it a scary clown or no? No, it's a great, perfect, universally beautiful clown. And I can't remember, you know, we did our clown episode, so I can't remember if it's an August clown or what, what type yeah, of clown yeah. it is, but it's a great clown. Um, and you can see all these, by the way, at Emojipedia. I just uh, saw it. Oh, what would you think? Did you see it? Mm -hmm. I, I quite it enjoyed theaters. it. Yeah, Dude, I thought it was good. The guy who did Pennywise, the oh, yeah. I, I can't remember which brother he he's, was. He's a he's a scars guard. That's what you say. We don't know. Yeah. we'll never know. But um, he did just an amazing job. Yeah, and I I had no skin in the game. I had never read any of it or seen any previous versions at all. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it had a lot of heart and was creepy. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really good. I thought it was good too. But you could also tell that Stranger Things had come out while they were writing this, and they were like, oh, let's retool this a little bit to really hit the Stranger Things crowd. I don't think that's true. I think it is true. I think they were, I think that script was locked long before Stranger Things came out. And I think they retooled it. <laughs> uh, you got anything else on emojis? Well, the kid from Stranger Things is in it. That was a little on the nose. I'm curious about the timeline there. So um, there's another one coming out, too. It's a uh, dude with a fro who looks exactly like Slim Goodbody. That's coming out in Emojipedia 11. Wait, who's Slim Goodbody again? 
Remember the guy who wore the suit that showed his internal oh, organs and all that yeah, yeah, from yeah. back in the day? Yeah, with the afro. Looks just like Slim Goodbody. Uh-huh. And then there's a mind-blown one and a vomiting one, too. But the clown's the best one. Okay? I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know more about emojis, go out. Go forth. Start talking in emojis. It's pretty interesting. Uh, and since I said it's interesting, it's time for listening to me. I'm going to call this uh, Meals on Wheels. We got a lot of great follow-up from people who were, in fact, inspired to go out and join Meals on Wheels. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Which was, best case scenario, exactly what we and Meals on Wheels was hoping for. Mm-hmm. So, hey guys, thanks for your commitment and awesomeness. Uh, I've been an avid listener for the past few years. You're my go-to for workouts and long car rides. Mm-hmm. A few weeks ago, I heard your episode of Meals on Wheels. I was absolutely blown away. I'm not sure if it was the sliding scale model or just the overall effects of the program, but you encourage me to sign up to serve with my local community center that offers Meals on Wheels in Central Ohio. He's in Columbus. Yeah. Uh, after getting fingerprinted a few days ago, I guess you got to do that. Sure, they don't want any weirdos. No, nope. uh, I am awaiting confirmation, like weirdos with no fingerprints. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm awaiting confirmation before going on my first and only shadow ride before being a driver myself. The program is very easy to learn, and I was surprised to hear that most drivers are actually between the ages of 50 and 60. I signed up for once a week for about two hours, and that is considered average. I highly encourage anyone of any age to look for the opportunity. Uh, look into this for Meals on Wheels, as you can do things like food prep, mm-hmm. administration work, and more. Uh, I know if I would have signed up. I, I don't know if I would have signed up if not from learning about it on your program. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, that is from Dalton Schaefer. Good work, Dalton. And Dalton wrote back after I told him he was going to be on Listener Mail. Mm-hmm. said, tell Josh, I live in Columbus now, and I purposefully do not say the Ohio State University, <laughs> and the natives are getting restless and angry. The, the, be careful, Dalton. Yeah. Be careful. Watch yourself. Thanks for signing up for we Meals want on you Wheels. To, we want you to stay alive so you can keep delivering meals on wheels. And for lots of other reasons. Sure. Uh, if you did something pretty great because we told you to, well, we want to hear about that. You can tweet to us at SYSK Podcast, at Josh M. Clark, or at Movie Crush, or slash Charles W. Chuck Bryant. You can send us an email to stuff podcast at howstuffworks.com. And as always, join us at our home on the web, stuffyoushouldknow.com. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit howstuffworks.com.